The privileged classes referred to a wide group of varying grades. The most obvious of these would be the Fla, or noble classes, hereditary princes of powerful families who were considered privileged on account of their noble birth and lineage. But there were also those who achieved a privileged status on account of their own skill and personal merits. This included high-grade members of the East Dana, the people of arts, and the academia, such as the chief Brehen or the historians of the Tua. Although there was clearly great respect for the arts and academics, not every member of these classes would be considered Nemed. Only those who reached the very highest degree within the most valued professions, who had accumulated sufficient wealth, and had a relative no more distant than a grandparent who also practiced a profession. And finally, there were those who entered privileged classes after accumulating enough wealth to render them worthy. But the process of social mobility was slow. As mentioned previously, the wealth needed to be maintained for at least three generations before one could move up a grade. Now we're going to take a look at the privileged class, known as the Fla, in a bit more detail. The Fla were the Irish aristocracy, the petty princes and chiefs with limited degrees of personal sovereignty, heavily protected by the law and significantly richer than the common population of whom, by comparison, we hear very little about. These would have been the sort of nobles who later took on titles of British nobility, the earls, the lords and the dukes. The Fla differed distinctly from the other grades, especially with regards to their relationship to land. Though private property was not the norm, and with most of the lands being held in common by the members of the Tua, members of the Fla grades were seen to be owners of the soil. And this was likely established by a powerful wealthy family's continued exclusive use and rent-free occupation of certain lands since time immemorial. But with their privileges came certain duties. As the wealthiest in society, the nobles were best placed to meet the responsibilities for the general upkeep and the maintenance of the Tua. To this end, that he could employ members of the unfree classes to work the lands, and the Fla was the only grade who was allowed to do this. But as we look back now to this age thousands of years later, it's important to bear in mind human nature is always present. And just like today, the wealthy of the past were prone to guard their wealth from the humbler classes. Consider this quote from Lawrence Ginnell's Breton Law's A Legal Handbook. As the sea attracts all waters, as power and wealth attracts to themselves more power and more wealth, the flower class tended to become great at the expense of the people beneath them. There were several types or degrees of fla, varying according to the degree of personal wealth, the lineage and the merit. But regardless of one's wealth or lineage or merit, simply being a member of the fla grade meant that one was eligible for election as chieftain. Mm-hmm.